بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ونضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قمنا ولله الحمد في الدرس الماضي ما يتعلق بالاصل الثاني من الاصول الثلاث نبدا باذن الله تعالى في هذا الدرس في الاصل الثالث بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وبعد قال مشنا بالله وفيز يتو الله we finish in the last lesson the matters which relate to the second principle and the third principle and in this lesson now we'll take the third principle ما هو الأصل الثالث من الأصول الثلاث؟ What is the third principle from amongst the three principles? ما هو الأصل الثالث من الأصول الثلاث؟ نعم. معرفة النبي محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام. Knowing the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فلا بد أن نعرف عن هذا النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أمور منها. So therefore we have to know certain matters about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and they are أقل ما يعرف في نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو يحفظ في نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the least amount that you should memorize from the lineage of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is. لو قال قائل من نبي هذه الأمة. If somebody said to you who is the Prophet of this أمة. ماذا تقول؟ What will you say? هل تعرف نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أم لا؟ Do you know the lineage of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم or not? من يعرف؟ Who knows? سبحان الله. نبي الأمة. The Prophet of the Ummah. ما تعرف أقل ما يعرف في نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. You don't know that at least the least amount of his lineage. نعم. هو. He is. محمد بن. محمد. محمد. ابن عبد الله. The son of عبد الله. ابن عبد المطلب. ابن عبد المطلب. The son of عبد المطلب. ابن هاشم. هاشم من القريش. The son of هاشم and هاشم is from Quraysh. والقريش من العرب والعرب من العرب من القريش من العرب اسماعيل وابن ابراهيم عليهما عليهما وعلى نبينا افضل الصلاه والسلام فتح الله عليه هذا اقل ما يحفظ في نسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the brother mentioned the, from Quraysh that Hashim is from Quraysh and Quraysh from the Arabs and the Arabs are from the children of Ismail and Ismail is the child of Ibrahim عليهما السلام and may the peace and blessing be upon our prophet. So this is the least amount that each one of you should know regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. Qayyid. Ila man bu'itha al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To whom was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent? Ila man? To whom? Ila al-Arab? To the Arabs? Ila qawmi khasa? To a particular, to his nation only? Ila man bu'itha al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To whom was he sent sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? إلى الثقلين الجن والإنس. To all of mankind and jinn, jinn and mankind. ما معنى هذا؟ What is the meaning of this? معنى هذا أن لا أحد يستطيع أن يتخلف عن شريعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. وكل من بلغت دعوة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يؤمن به فهو كافر كان من كان يهودي أو نصراني. The meaning of this is that it's not permissible for anybody. To reject anything from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reaches a person or is conveyed to a person, that it's not permissible for him to not believe in it, whether he's a Jew or Christian or any other person, it's not permissible. إِلَى مَاذَا يَدْعُو النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَى مَاذَا يَدْعُو What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam call to? يَدْعُو إِلَى مَاذَا مَنَ الَّذِي يَعْرِفُ who knows what did the Prophet What is the call of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He used to call to Islam and also to warn from shirk. And he used to warn from a shirk. So therefore, 
the da'wah which comes after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has to be similar to the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That a person should call to a tawheed and forbid from evil, uh, from uh, shirk. Is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from, is he, was he a human or not? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was a man, what's the evidence? Say, as Allah said in the say, indeed I am a man like you. But, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was distinguished from us, from us <coughs> men by the fact that revelation came to him. How many years or how old was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Naam. <coughs> Sixty-three years old. When he was sent as a prophet, he was forty years old. How many years was the prophet? Was he a prophet and a messenger? Twenty-three years. Meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spent 40 years before Prophethood came to him and 23 more years after Prophethood as a messenger and a prophet. What was the first thing that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from the Quran? The chapter Iqra. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was he a prophet or a messenger? Was he a prophet or a messenger? Don't shout for the answers, please. Was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was he a prophet or a messenger? He was both. He was a prophet and a messenger, both as the brother mentioned. When Allah revealed to him Surah Al Iqra, he became a prophet. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him Surah Al Muddathir, he became a messenger. So the first chapter that was revealed to him for him to become a prophet was the Surah Iqra. And the first chapter that was revealed to him so he could become a messenger was Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir. Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fulfill the trust, convey the message, advise the ummah and strive and fight in the way of Allah as he ought to have done? Did he do this? Or did the Prophet وسلم, leave something from the religion that he didn't uh, convey to us? Yeah. So, the, the answer is that just as Allah says in the Quran, this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he conveyed everything that was obliga uh, obligated upon him to convey. And he did not leave anything behind, he didn't hide anything. And whomsoever says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew something that he didn't convey to us, or he left something behind, or he hid it, then this person is a kafir, a disbeliever with a major form of kufr. لو جاء أنا إنسان وقال رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في المنام. If a person comes to us and he says that I have seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in a dream. وقال يا فلان. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him or so and so. صلي. Pray. الظهر خمسة ركعات. Pray ظهر with five units of prayer. 
وبلغ الناس هذا أن يصلي الظهر خمس ركعات. And go tell the people or convey to the people that they should pray dhuhr five units of prayer. ماذا نسمع؟ What should we do? ماذا نسمع؟ نصلي أو لا نصلي؟ What should we do? Should we pray or not? نعم. نرد لماذا؟ why why should we reject؟ قال رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في المنام وقال لي صلي يا فلان خمس ركعات الظهر. This person has just said I've seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in my dream and he said to me go tell the people to pray five units. ماذا نسمع؟ نرد. في نقد لماذا؟ قد أروح يا. لأنه لو قلنا هذا الكلام لو قلنا بهذا. معنى هذا ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مات وابقى شيء لم يبلغه لنا وبلغه لنا عن طريق المنام. Because if we were to accept this statement from this person, what we're saying is that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he passed away, he knew something that he didn't tell us. And then he revealed it to us through the dream of this person. ومن قال ان الرؤيا من قال ان الشريعه تثبت بالرؤى والمنامات؟ من قال هذا؟ And who previously has ever said that the Sharia can be established or proved through dreams. The Sharia, from where is it taken from? The Sharia, Islam, where is it taken from? From the book, the Quran, and the Sunnah. And this means that the one who says that the Prophet is still alive, he did not tell the Prophet. This is kufr. And so the one who says, or the one who says this type of statement, he's saying that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left behind something which he didn't convey, and this is kufr, disbelief. هل مات النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أم لا؟ Did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم die or not؟ نعم. نعم. Yes. لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بشر الحق ما الحق البشر. Because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was a human and that everything that the humans faced he faced. نعم. إن كميتوا إن ميتوا. Like Allah said in the Quran, إن كميتوا you or Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم will die just as they will also die. هل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يغني عن أحد شيئا أو يقدم أو يؤخر أو يستطيع أن يدخل أحد برحمة الله ويخرج أحد برحمة الله؟ كان the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم change the decree of somebody so he takes something which should be here he takes it back or forward or enters somebody into جنة by through his own mercy؟ لا. No. No. ليس له شيء من خصائص الربوبية. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم does not possess anything. From the characteristics of Rububiya, from Lordship. Where and when were the five prayers made obligatory? Where, where and when were the five prayers made obligatory? Where and when? It was in the cave during which. When Ali, when Ali revealed the Quran to the Prophet, and the Prophet. No, the five daily prayers were made a big tree. Al Isra wal Mi'raj. Laylat Urijab Al Al Isra wal Mi'raj. When the Prophet Urijab the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and who did it? Allah. So the Sheikh is asking. He's repeating that. The, Quran, uh, the prayers were made obligatory when the Prophet وسلم, was taken up on the night of ascension. And who is the one who made it obligatory the five prayers? Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself made the prayers obligatory upon the Prophet وسلم, and upon us. And this therefore shows the importance of the five daily prayers. This is before the Hijrah, before the migration to Medina, by how many years? By three, before three years. So the Prophet ﷺ prayed in Mecca for three years. And then after this, the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Al-Habasha, to Habasha, to Abyssinia. أو المدينة أو مدينة أو الطائف أو الطائف where did he go إلى أين هاجر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الهجرة انتقال بين الكفر وبين الإسلام where did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم migrate in terms of going from the place or the residence of disbelief 
to the place of residence of Al Islam. So you do not know where the Prophet migrated to? Where did the Prophet migrate to? Medina. To Medina. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how many years did he remain in Medina? Ten years. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away. Is there any type of action? <coughs> which takes us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not explain? No, Allah. No, by Allah. Did the Prophet sallallahu did, is there anything which takes us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not forbid us from? No, Allah. No, by Allah. Al-khayr a'amam al-khayr al-lazhi dalla ilayhi tawheed Goodness and the greatest form of goodness that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided us to is at tawheed And the most evil of faith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us from is a shirk. So therefore, what is the obligation? What is the obligation regarding that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with? That you seek knowledge, you learn, وتعمل, you act, وتدعو, and then you call others to it. That you defend the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that you act according to it, both in private and in open. So we spoke about Hijrah. And we have defined the Hijrah as being migrating or moving from a place of Kufr or a country of Kufr disbelief to a country or place of Islam. And yet today, the people, they call Hijrah going from a Muslim country to a country of disbelief. This is the reality of today. And therefore, Hijrah, according to us, is three types. Hijrah from a country of disbelief to a country of Islam. And this will remain, or this ruling will remain up until the establishment of the hour. Meaning, this will never stop, finish. Always. Speak to yourself regarding making hijrah to the Muslim country. And always supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blesses you by being able to move from the country of Kufr to the country of Islam. The second type of hijrah is is the hijrah from Mecca to Medina. And this finished when Mecca was conquered. Because Mecca, it was conquered by the Prophet وسلم, and therefore it became a country of Islam, a place of Islam. And in this, the Prophet وسلم, gave a glad tidings that Mecca would never go back to being a place of disbelief. The third type of hijrah is. Is that you migrate or move away from everything which Allah has made forbidden? How, how can you move away from anything which Allah has made forbidden? By four ways. Number one, in terms of your actions. And number two, in terms of you as a person doing the action. And then in terms of the time and the place. So how do you stay away or distance yourself from that which Allah has made haram? In terms of actions. And the person doing the action. And the times and the places. So in terms of staying distant or removing away from 
uh, everything which Allah has made haram in terms of actions, i.e. every single action <coughs> which Allah has made haram, you stay away from it, you distance yourself from it. <laughs> so you, for, you leave alone or you distance yourself from shirk akbar and shirk asghar. <laughs> and the major sins and the minor sins. <laughs> so this is the first type of hajar. First, first of all, distancing yourself in actions. <laughs> As for the second type of uh, hijrah or hajar, it is in terms of a person doing the action. <laughs> Who do you who do you boycott? Who do you stay away from or distance yourself from? <laughs> the people of disbelief, <laughs> the disbelievers, <laughs> and the hypocrites. <laughs> Thirdly, <laughs> is staying away from all the hijrah of <coughs> the times. <laughs> so, for example the times in which the disbelievers have festivals or they celebrate. An example of this is for example, New Year. So should you now in your houses with your children celebrate the New Year? No. Rather you have to distance yourself or move yourself away from this time. So you don't ever celebrate the new year. And then distancing yourself away from certain places. So do you come to those places that contain shirk? No, rather you have to stay away from them, distance yourself from them, move away from them. The places in which or where the disbelievers, they celebrate or they are festivals. The places in which alcohol is drunk. Is it correct? Is it correct for you to go to a place where alcohol is drunk, even if you're only drinking coffee, for example? Yes, sir. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that whosoever believes in Allah on the final day, then do not sit on a table or in a, uh, near a table where alcohol is being drunk. So therefore we have to stay away or distance ourselves from Four things. عمل, the action, وعمل, the people who are doing the action, times and places. ثم, then after this, when does the gateway to repentance, when is it finished, when is it closed? When does the avenue towards repentance stop? So repentance will stop, I stop being accepted when one of two things. Either the sun, instead of rising from the east, it rises from the west, or when a person takes the last breath whereby the soul reaches the throat. We understood or we studied the meaning of La ilaha illallah that you have to have two or you have to fulfill two pillars when we define La ilaha illallah rejecting all of the false deities before having Iman in Allah so what is the meaning of At-Taghut what is the meaning of At-Taghut the best definition which was given regarding the word or the term Tawood is that which Ibn Qayyim mentioned. Anything, anything or any object of which or in which the slave exceeds the limits in in terms of worshipping it or following it or being obedient to it so for example now we have one country here and we have one country there 
and between the two countries we have a boundary or a limit. حدود. Boundaries. تجاوز الحد في الأحجار والأشجار وعبدها من دون الله فقد جعلها قواقي. So if somebody exceeds the limits in terms of trees and stones, i.e. begins to worship them, then he has made it a tawbut or tawaqeet. تجاوز الحد في العلماء والأمراء وأطاعهم في معصية الله. If a person exceeds the limits with regards to the scholars and the leaders, so he starts obeying them in disobedience to Allah. He has made them a tawbut or tawaqeet. ما تجاوز بالعبد حد من معبود أحجار أشجار. So any object or anything in which the slave exceeds the limits, whether it is worshipped like trees and idols and stones, or it is followed, like for example the evil scholars who are followed, or obeyed, like for example the rulers or the leaders who are evil and they are out of the obedience of Allah. There can be no obedience to the creation when there is disobedience to the one who created them. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he said that At-Tawaghit, there is Tawaghit are many in number. However, the heads of the Tawaghit are five. Who can mention the heads of the Tawaghit? Tawaghit. Who knows? The heads of the Tawaghit. He said, if you don't know the heads of the Tawaghit, then maybe you'll end up worshipping them, or following them, or obeying them. So therefore you have to know the heads of the Tawaghit, Tawhut. Firstly, Iblis. Iblis. We seek Allah's refuge from him. So this is the first or the first heads of the Tawaghit, Iblis upon him is a curse of Allah. We don't curse Iblis because we don't benefit from cursing Iblis. But we seek the refuge of Allah from Iblis. Because in the hadith it has been narrated that once Iblis is cursed, he feels even more proud. So the first head of the Tawaghit is Iblis. Secondly, anybody who calls the people to worship him. Like Fir'aun said, that I do not know for you, for you I besides from himself, any other god. Thirdly, Anybody who is worshipped besides Allah and he is pleased with this. So for example, a person comes to you and he gives you salam and then he bows his head to you in prostration and bowing. What do you do? You say, well done, may Allah bless you. This is how the scholars should be respected. If you were to say this, then you are a Tawud and there is no doubt in this. What should you do? Rather, you should say that have you created a partner to Allah? It isn't correct that you should direct to me any form of worship is only for Allah. If a person comes to you and a person says whatever Allah wills and whatever you want, what should you say to him? You say to him, have you created me as an equal to Allah? But rather say only what Allah wills. So everybody or anybody who is worshipped besides Allah and you are pleased with this and this person is a Tawud. A person took an oath or he swore by your life. What should you say or do? Do you, do you accept his vow and believe what he says? 
Tagut. No, rather this is Tagut. Lagadan Tonkira. You have to forbid him from doing this. Ay. And then the next type is the, the next of the heads of the Tawud is somebody who claims that he has something from the knowledge of the unseen. So anybody who claims to have knowledge of the unseen or he claims that he knows the time of the coming of the hour or somebody claims Prophethood or messengership after the death of the Prophet <coughs> then this person is a kafir, a disbeliever and a liar. <coughs> so for example, if a person said <coughs> that tomorrow after Maghrib, this will happen and this will happen. <coughs> you should say, Wallah about Allah, you are a liar and a disbeliever. A person says, a person says that the hour will be established on this day in this month. Say rather you are a disbeliever and a liar from the Ta'ud. Rather say as Allah says in the Quran, say nobody knows that which is in the skies and the earth, the heavens and the earth, except Allah from, from the matters of the unseen. So he said that now we see some people, even though this issue is known by default, this issue is known in the region by necessity, that nobody has this knowledge to the unseen except Allah. And yet, we find people when somebody comes and says something, on the internet they start writing that this is what this person has said and people begin to believe him. Al-Khamis and the fifth Tawbut is is the person who ruled by other than which, that which Allah has revealed. This issue this issue, this last issue is something which has to be understood and there's detail and explanation that has to be given. If a person rules by other than which Allah has revealed and he believes and he believes that the ruling of other than Allah is better than the ruling of Allah or if he believes that this other law or manly law is equal to the law of Allah or that the rule or the laws of Allah they're not appropriate for this time or place. So if this person believes this, then this person is a Tawud and he is a Kafir with a major form of disbelief. But however, if a person gives preference to the man-made laws or the laws of the Tawagheet due to a desire from himself, a sinful desire because he wants authority or he wants a position upon the people but inside him he still believes that the rule of Allah is the one that is obliged to be applied then this is kufr, it's disbelief, however it's a minor form of disbelief and it's feared upon this person that he will enter into major disbelief. So these are the five heads of the Tawagheet. And then after this, the author, may Allah mercy upon him, he concluded this blessed treatise by the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that the head of the affair is Al-Islam. If we take away, if we cut off the head, then the body will die. And Islam, it's already come, we've already explained it. It is Al-Istislam lillahi bil-Tawheed. To submit yourself in front of Allah with Al-Tawheed. Wal-Inqiyad lahu bil-Ta'a. That is to direct yourself to Allah in obedience. And to free yourself or disassociate yourself from shirk and the people of shirk. And we've also mentioned the pillars of Islam. So the head of the affair is Al-Islam.
And the pillar of the Afaymi religion is the prayer. These pillars upon which the building is built, it is the prayer. So if we were to remove and demolish these pillars, all of the building would collapse. So therefore, Therefore, we have to preserve the five daily prayers. And upon the main, is to establish these prayers in congregation. And the highest peak, the summit of this affair, I religion is Al Jihad fighting Jihad in the way of Allah. Who do you fight in the way of Allah? تجاهد من؟ Who do you fight? Who do you make jihad against? تجاهد من؟ من الذي يجب عليك أن تجاهد؟ Who do you make jihad against? Who is it obliged upon you to make jihad against? تجاهد First, you make jihad against. تجاهد أول نفسك. First person that you strive and make jihad against is your own self. ثم الشيطان. And then a shaytan. And then the disbelievers and the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. And then innovations and disobedience and the evil affairs. And therefore you have to make jihad against four things. The first thing that you fight jihad against is your own soul, your own self, your own desires. How do you make jihad against your own desires? By implementing Surat Al-Asr. By the four important matters. With knowledge firstly. Then actions. Then da'wah calling to it. And then you have patience upon knowledge and actions and da'wah. Now, <coughs> what do you want from the disbeliever? You say to him, you have to pray. So do you pray? You say to the disbeliever that you have to pray in congregation with the jama'ah. And a zakah and a siyam fasting. So what should you do? The first person you have to make jihad against is you, your own self, and your own desires. As Allah said in the Quran, that you, do you order the people with goodness and yet you forget yourself? <coughs> and therefore you have to fight jihad against yourself and your desires first. Secondly, you fight and you strive and you make jihad against a shaitan. Al-Shaytan, the one who is cursed and far away from the mercy of Allah. Shaytan was called Shaytan with this name because Rajim, because he throws to Bani Adam. He throws at Bani Adam with, in two ways or with two things. Either by doubts or through desires. Therefore you have to strive or fight or make jihad against the shaitan by leaving alone both doubts and also desires. So the doubts like bid'ah, innovations and a shirk. And desires like the major desires or the minor desires. So this is the one who is striving or fighting or making jihad against shaitan. As for making jihad against the disbelievers and the hypocrites, it is upon your heart and by your tongue, upon your limbs and also in your wealth. In your heart, you, you have to hate and detest the disbelievers and their festivals, their celebrations, their places. Upon your tongue by saying, I distance myself and I free from myself from that which you worship. Upon your limbs, 
عدم مشاركة الكفار في عيادهم واحتفالاتهم وطقوسهم والشركيات والبدع. By not taking part in their festivals and celebrations and their acts of shirk and bid'ah innovations. وبالمال. And also in your wealth. تأخذ شيء من مالك وتشتري بعض الكتب لدعوة غير المسلمين. هذا مجاهدة بالمال. Take something a little bit from your wealth. And buy a book or some leaflets and give it to the disbelievers to call them to Islam. This is fighting jihad or striving against them in your wealth. <laughs> and then the fourth uh, type of jihad is <laughs> is jihad against or striving against or fighting against bid'ah innovations and ma'asiya disobedience and munkarat, the evil things. So how do you wage a war against the innovations and acts of disobedience? As the Prophet said, whomsoever amongst you sees an evil, then let him change it with his hand. But, but changing the evil with your hands, this is specific to the rulers and the people who have authority. So if you're not able to do so, I remove the evil or repel the evil with your hand, then upon your tongue. So removing or repelling the evil upon your tongue is for whom? For the scholars and the students of knowledge. And if you're not able to do so, then change it with your heart. And how do you change it in your heart? This is for every single person. And by this, and all praises due to Allah, we have completed al the treaty al Talatha. There's one issue that remains with us. So there's one issue that remains with us, and that is going to the places to fight jihad in those places <coughs> where jihad, it is said that jihad is being fought. <coughs> because some youth, may Allah guide them and guide, guide us, they ask about these matters. <coughs> but what do you do with regards to these, these affairs and these issues? <coughs> you have to go back, back to the ulama <coughs> al-Rabbaniyeen. The senior scholars who have knowledge and they act upon their knowledge. And you can't go back and return or refer back to the fatwa of normal people. And every single one of us has to supplicate to Allah that He gives him martyrdom in the way of Allah. But the truthful martyrdom, not a false witness statement of false martyrdom. And we can't say that jihad is these explosions that we see or these kidnappings or these actions that are being done without any evidence from the Quran, without any evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and without referring back to the senior scholars. And some people, he's not even able to strive against his own self and his own desires. So what does he do? He wants to go and fight other people, make jihad against other people. First of all, you have to prioritize by fighting jihad and striving against your own self.